Hi guys! This is going to be a quick movie analysis of Fight Club. It's one of my favorite movies. It's rich with spiritual symbolism and messages about our collective generation, particularly how it relates to the divine masculine, the internal struggle, the creation of a false self, and the integration of the shadow. <laughs> For six months, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. With insomnia, nothing's real. Everything's far away. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. He's an insomniac. He can't sleep, which kind of lends the movie sort of an awake or a dream state. You don't quite know if this is dream or reality. We'll just let that drop. When you have insomnia, you're never really asleep and you're never really awake. Like so many others, I had become a slave to the IKEA nesting instinct. Uh, yes, I'd like to order the Erica Bakari dust ruffles. So the movie opens up with the narrator in the typical Matrix job, like so many, stuck, feeling powerless, being trapped in consumerism. IBM Stellar Sphere. The Microsoft Galaxy, Planet Starbucks. I'd flip through catalogs and wonder what kind of dining set defines me as a person. I had it all, even the glass dishes with tiny bubbles and imperfections. I had everything in that suitcase. My CK shirts, my DKNY shoes, my AX ties, single serving cream, single pat of butter, the microwave cordon bleu hobby kit. Shampoo conditioner combos, sample packaged mouthwash, tiny bars of soap. His mind is stuck in the material world, so he goes and tries and finds a material solution in the form of pills. Something. Red and blue, two and alls, lipstick red, second alls. No. You need healthy, natural sleep. I'm in pain. You want to see pain? Swing by First Methodist Tuesday nights. See the guys with testicular cancer. That's pain. If you pay attention, you can see a quick apparition of Brad Pitt's character flashing in, which you see several times throughout the movie, lending it more of this dreamlike state where you don't know if through his insomnia he's awake or asleep. We give each other strength. It's time for the one-on-ones, so let's all of us here follow Thomas's good example and really open ourselves up. Did you find a partner? Bob. Bob had bitch tits. <sighs> This was a support group for men with testicular cancer. Go ahead, Gwenez. You can cry. <laughs> and then something happened. I let go. Lost in oblivion. Dark and silent and complete. I found freedom. Losing all hope was freedom. It's okay. <laughs> Babies don't sleep this well. These scenes speak pretty strongly to the masculine condition of needing to go so far out to go to support group to find a way to find empathy and emotional release, which a lot of men can relate to because of the general suppression of masculine emotions. And it's almost like satire, the fact that Bitch Tits Bob is this feminized character. He has breasts, he's, he has a feminine voice. So it's sort of a sad satire mockery of the idea of men expressing their emotions, but yet admitting to how important it is. I became addicted. When he starts going to the support groups, it marks the beginning of his own spiritual journey, going internally and exploring the inner self, as many people do once they start their spiritual path. Where does it lead? To your cave. Step forward into your cave. That's right. 
You're going deeper into your cave. And you're going to find your power animal. <laughs> the penguin is an animal that represents the unorthodox. It's a bird, but it doesn't fly. It has, has very strange, peculiar characteristics, so it represents going avant-garde, out of the status quo, and it's sliding, so it's symbolizing letting go. Every evening I died, and every evening I was born again, resurrected. And she ruined everything. This is cancer, right? Marla, the big tourist. Her lie reflected my lie. And suddenly, I felt nothing. I couldn't cry. So once again, I couldn't sleep. So Marla comes in and she represents what so many women do to men externally in relationships as being the mirror, the shadow self. It can also be an internal paradigm. So in this case, it's internal, external as it's playing out in the movie. He's smart enough to know that he dislikes her because she's mirroring him. Marla, you liar! You big tourist! I need this! Now get out! So now we meet Tyler Durden, the false self, the persona that the protagonist creates, and already you can see that he's out of the ordinary, he's free in the way he speaks and expresses himself, much like the protagonist would like to be. I make and I sell soap, the yardstick of civilization. And this is how I met Tyler Durden. Did you know if you mixed equal parts of gasoline and frozen orange juice concentrate, you can make napalm? No, I did not know that. Is that true? That's right. One can make all kinds of explosives using simple household items. Really? If one was so inclined. The protagonist comes home and finds out all his IKEA paradise is blown up, and it's much like the tower moment of the tarot, in which a big explosion, a change of life circumstances, leads one further into the spiritual path. Blast of debris that used to be your furniture and personal effects blows out of your floor to ceiling windows and sails flaming into the night. I suppose these things happen. When you buy furniture, you tell yourself. That's it, that's the last sofa I'm gonna need. Whatever else happens, I've got that sofa problem handled. I had it all. I had a therapy that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. All gone. Mm. All gone. Now, why do guys like you and I know what a tevay is? Is this essential to our survival in the hunter-gatherer sense of the word? No. What are we then? Uh, consumers. Right. We are consumers. We are byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Murder, crime, poverty, these things don't concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear, Rogaine, Viagra, Olestra. Martha Stewart. Fuck Martha Stewart. Martha's polishing the brass on the Titanic. It's all going down, man. So fuck off with your sofa units and string green stripe patterns. I say never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let, let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. Tyler Durden represents the archetype of the primitive man who is completely free from the material bondage that the protagonist is in. So this is an aspect that he creates in this false self so that he's able to free himself from his previous self-imposed bondage. The things you own end up owning you. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression. Our lives. 
So Tyler also represents the wild masculine yang nature, the breaking of taboos. He puts pornographic clips in movies. He pees in people's foods. He's wild, untamed, doesn't care what kind of what place he lives hole. in. Completely primitive and Nothing worked. free. Turning on one light and then another light in the house went out. I don't know my dad. I mean, I know him, but he left when I was like six years old, married this other woman, had some other kids. He like did this every six years. He goes to a new city and starts a new family. Fucker like setting up franchises. My dad never went to college, so it's real important that I go. That sounds familiar. So I graduate, I call him up long distance. I said, Dad, now what? He says, get a job. Same here. Now I'm 25. Make my yearly call again. I say, Dad, now what? He says, I don't know. Get married. I mean, you can't get married. I'm a 30-year-old boy. We're a generation of men raised by women. I'm wondering if another woman is really the answer we need. This scene is very significant, which most people will probably pay attention to the first time, but they reveal that there is this wounded masculine within their psyche. So it's separation from the feminine because of their inability to have this correct masculine energy, and which is part of what leads to the creation of the Fight Club. And it also parallels his inability to connect with Marla, which is the feminine energy, and is also his shadow. I felt sorry for guys packed into gyms, trying to look like how Calvin Klein or Tommy Hilfiger said they should. Is that what a man looks like? <laughs> ah, Self-improvement is masturbation. Now self-destruction. How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? I don't want to die without any scars. The protagonist is attempting to reclaim this wounded masculine, to reintegrate what it means to him to be masculine, and part of this is the creation of this underground ritual. It's got all the elements of ritual. It's secret, it's taboo, it's transgressive. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. Third. When he trounced the maitre d' of a local food court. Sometimes all you could hear were the flat, hard packing sounds over the yelling. Stop! Or the wet choke when someone caught their breath and sprayed. Stop! The hysterical shouting was in tongues, like at a Pentecostal church. throughout the movie as this pervasive sort of feminine influence that he doesn't quite know what to do with. It seems as though he has interest in her, but he's not able to accept that within himself because he's fighting to own this feminine shadow, this anima, as Carl Jung would call it. And you see how the protagonist has these mixed feelings towards the feminine energy in this scene where they go to the department store to sell soap for the vain, sort of superficial feminine that he's used to. You're gonna have to keep me up all night. I'm fucking believable. He was obviously able to handle it. You know what I mean, you fucked her. No, I didn't. Never? No. You're not into her, are you? No, God, not at all. I am Jack's raging bile duct. Are you sure? You can tell me. Believe me, I'm sure. Put a gun to my head and paint the walls with my brains. Well, that's good, because she's a predator posing as a house pet. Except for their humping, Tyler and Marla were never in the same room. My parents pulled this exact same act for years. The condom is the glass slipper of our generation. Aha, pay dirt. The richest, creepiest fat in the world. The fat of the land. First, this is the best soap. Thank you, Susan. It was beautiful. We were selling rich women their own fat asses back to them. I think I'm okay. Well, thanks anyway. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. See you around. What is that? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh my God. 
Who did this? A person. Guy or girl? What do you care if it's a guy or a girl? What do you care if I ask? Because it's none of your business. You're Leave me alone. I am not afraid no. to say, let me go. No! Talk to me! Let go of me. No! Leave me alone. This conversation. This conversation. Is over. Is over. I just can't win with you, can I? movie starts getting a lot more wild now where we see how this creation of this fight club and this false self persona is leading to a lot of freedom for the protagonist. He's able to stand up to his boss and get what he wants and he's able to create this new society and break all these rules and find this freedom but it's also that inner fear now manifesting of allowing the false self to take over too much to the point where you lose your true self. So he begins to fear the false self and how much control he's allowed it to take over. It's allowed him to create a lot of what he wanted, but now it's almost out of the point of his control and he's not sure what he's going to do with it now. What is this? This is a chemical burn. <laughs> You'll hurt more than you've ever been burned, and you will have a scar. What are you doing? Guided meditation worked for cancer. It could work for this. Stay with the pain. Don't shut this out. No, no, no. Oh, God! Look at your hand. The first soap was made from the ashes of heroes, like the first monkey shot into space. Without pain, without sacrifice, we would have nothing. I tried not to think of the word serum or flesh. Stop it! This is your pain. This is your burning hand. It's right here. I'm going to my cave. I'm going to my cave. I'm going to find my power animal. No! Don't deal with it the way those dead people do. Come on! I get the boy, get no, me. what you're feeling is premature and light. <coughs> it's the greatest moment of your life, man. And you're off somewhere miserable. I am not! Shut up. Our fathers were our models for God. If our fathers bailed, what does that tell you about God? No, 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 I don't. Listen to me. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. Security? I am Jack's smirking revenge. Oh! Please don't hit me again. Please. Telephone, computer, fax machine, 52 weekly paychecks, and 48 airline flight coupons. We now had corporate sponsorship. This is how Tyler and I were able to have Fight Club every night of the week. Expired community college student ID. What'd you study, Raymond? Stuff. Stuff? Where the midterms are? Oh. I asked you what you studied. Biology mostly. Why? I don't know. What did you want to be, Raymond K. Hessel? The question, Raymond, was what did you want to be? Answer him, Raymond. Jesus. Veterinarian. Veterinarian. Animals. Yeah, animals. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. Something on your mind, dear? No. All right, yeah. Why wasn't I told about Project Mayhem? The first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions. What are you talking about? Why didn't you include me in the beginning? The fight club was the beginning. Now it's moved out of the basement. It's called Project Mayhem. When you and I started Fight Club together, do you remember that? It's as much mine as it is yours, you know. Is this about you and me? Yeah, I thought we were doing this together. You're missing the point. This does not belong to us. We are not special. Fuck that. You, you should have told me. This scene represents the turning point where he now integrates his false self within himself. And he creates one persona. So he used the false self to achieve certain means. And now he no longer needs it to be separate. He integrates it back into his whole self. Hitting bottom isn't a weekend retreat. It's not a goddamn seminar. Stop trying to control everything and just let go. Let go! All right, fine. Fine. <laughs> we just had a near-life experience. And then... Tyler? Tyler was gone. if you 
you've seen Tyler. I'm not exposed to speak any such information to you, nor would I even if I had said information you want at this juncture be able. You're a moron. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Yeah? More like me. Have we ever done it? Done what? Have we ever had sex? What kind of stupid question is that? It's stupid because the answer is yes or because the answer is no. This is a trick. No, Marla, I need to know... You mean you want to know if I think we're just having sex or making love? We did make love. Is that what you're calling it? Just answer the question, Marla, please. Did we do it or not? You fuck me, then snub me. You love me, you hate me. You show me a sensitive side, then you turn into a total asshole. Is that a pretty accurate description of our relationship, Tyler? We have just lost cabin pressure. What did you just say? What is wrong with you? What did you just call me? Say my name. Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, you fucking freak. What's going on? I'm the hell's crap, Tyler. I don't understand this. You were looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I look like you want to look. I fuck like you want to fuck. I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. This is crazy. People do it every day. They talk to themselves. They see themselves as they'd like to be. Marla, you're fucking Marla, Tyler. Uh, technically, you're fucking Marla, but it's all the same to her. <gasps> oh, my God. Now you see our dilemma. She knows too much. I think we're going to have to talk about how this might compromise our goals. So now after letting go, he realizes the truth and he sees that he is Tyler Durden and he no longer wants this extreme manifestation of this false self where he wants to blow up the city and wreak havoc in society. So he's going to have to reintegrate his shadow, reintegrate his anima in order to stop the false self from taking over. I'm, I'm trying to tell you that I'm sorry because what I've come to realize is that I, I really like you, Marla. You do? I really do. I care about you, and I don't want anything bad to happen to you because of me. Marla, your life is in danger. What? You need to leave town for a while. Marla, wait, you don't no, understand. Leave me alone. Marla, Just I'm trying away. to no, protect like, you. Don't, I don't ever want to see you again. Hello. I need you to arrest me. I am the leader of a terrorist organization responsible for numerous acts of vandalism and assault all over the city. Black pay per view! I don't want this. Right, except you is meaningless now. We have to forget about you. <laughs> Your voice in my head. Your voice in mine. You're a fucking hallucination. Why can't I get rid of you? You need me. No, I don't. I really don't hey, anymore. you created me. I didn't create some loser alter ego to make myself feel better. Take some responsibility. I'm grateful to you for everything that you've done for me. But this is too much. I don't want this. What do you want? You want to go back to the shit job? The fucking condo world watching sitcoms? Fuck you. I won't do it. are open. What's that smell? Yes, but it's okay. Marla, look at me. I'm really okay. Trust me. Everything's gonna be fine. <gasps> He is Tyler. He reintegrates his shadow back into himself and he kills off the false self. So even though the false self served a purpose, it allowed him to accomplish everything he needed to. He no longer needs it and he destroys it as it became too self-sabotaging for him. There's so many themes in the movie of letting go and using pain and the transgressive and the taboo in order to heal oneself and if you pay attention 
a lot of the movie speaks to the idea of duality and that there is nothing really there's nothing wrong, really wrong or bad in the sense that everything they did, even though appearing on the surface to be harmful, was really for the higher good. Just like in the scene where he holds a gun to Raymond's head, it's really for his own higher purpose, that he wants him to do what he set out to do. So we see in this movie the idea of duality and that the darkness is the light, everything serves a purpose. It's also a lot about just letting go and allowing the chips to fall where they may. There's a lot of stuff in this movie that I think are helpful for one to learn from on the spiritual path, particularly for the Divine Masculine. Let me know if you liked this interpretation and if you have any additional things that you would like to share as your interpretation. Please like, share, and subscribe. And see you in the next video.